Hello people, this is Christian. Welcome back to my computer and fusion for 60. And this mesh body, sorry, I got the bodies. This mesh body with a warning, and this solid body that is dimensionally correct. So we're gonna have a look on a possible workflow going from a mesh to a useful, I'm sorry, you say, a useful sketch that we then can extrude into a useful solid that we then can do edits to and whatever we want to do because it's a true solid with infusion created from a sketch not a converted mesh and why is there a warning of this mesh if you have a look you can see there's a hole through it this is only a surface body you can see the inside of it and that will not be able to convert correctly yes there are ways around you could cover up and uh, and do other things and of course in the mesh workspace you have modify convert uh, specifically if you have a hobbies version you only have a faceted you do not have a prismatic version that means it gives you really bad conversion with a lot of faces and stuff gonna cancel it so and sometimes prismatic doesn't work specifically if you have a strange geometry or it's broken somehow or maybe you don't just want to convert it you want to have full control of the dimension because this is a real life product and you might be able to know some of the dimensions and so some of the dimensions we can guess from the sketch we're going to create so we're going to have a look at this how i go from a mesh to a sketch to a solid so i'm just going to take this away i've already made a save do not forget to save we're going to insert our mesh which is here like this and i'm going to turn on the region because i want one of the region's planes to go through the center of this body so it can be useful so i'm going to center the mesh like this and we get a plane going straight for everything and we get its center of region. this is like a symmetric part uh, symmetric part so it makes things a bit easier and uh, we'll move it to ground we'll hit ok and be satisfied with that and of course if we have a look at this uh, part here we have uh, one two three symmetry and even we can do only half of this so one eighth is all we need to do to be able to do the full thing so we're going to target that uh, first thing we do we're going to in a mesh tab go to create and create mesh section sketch it asks us for a body yes our mesh body let's open up there's still uh, oh, sorry, not origin the bodies uh, there's a warning of a mesh of course because you know it's manifold it's not a closed mesh uh, but we don't care about that we're just going to select the mesh and select a plane select this here and we get this faint outline of a sketch i'm going to hit ok and fusion we do some thinking and pop out a sketch down here now of course uh, simply oh e for extrude select for profile there is no profile this is not a profile this is a mesh section sketch that's the why this this brown orange color to tell us that so this is not useful what we can do now we're going to open up a sketch folder to here here we have the mesh sketch in its own little section under the sketch we can do it here or down here right click and edit sketch we we'll look at the sketch can turn off the origin point makes it a bit easy to see so we're going to do some tracing and in the sketch so we can just start doing lines but the thing is we can't reference anything in this mesh right now there's a special tool for that under create we have a fit curves to mesh section so you're going to use that and it pops out a little uh, extra uh, we call it dialog box over here with some different functions lines arcs splines close splines circles and so forth so what we're going to do let's start with a line make it easier for ourselves uh, we're going to start so you can see i selected line now it starts picking up lines here so if we zoom in we can see uh, my suspicion is there are no splines here these are straight lines and arcs that's what you would create this if you did this in a cad software so this here must be a line i can now to check what i'm doing i can hide the mesh sketch and turn it on to look i think we have an arc from here and looking at the sections here that arc should be going boom boom can that be the last one or that that is most probably the last one we have one more arc from here up to let's see there you can see we can see the faces of the mesh here and we have one arc over to here we have a line down to here another arc let's see arc it goes down to here you get a warning sometimes because you're not done all the points of mesh input so let's work line 
check how far we are we are there good we're gonna do an arc it goes an arc up to we can see blah blah blah, blah the faces of an arc look like a low poly arc and we find a point here we do a line let's find line we do an arc from here up to this point try and get as close as possible we will later check everything with uh, constraints and stuff and dimensions that far let's zoom out and see that looks like the outline as i said i will do only do one eighth i will do this corner up here and then i can use mirror and other stuff uh, now it's still connected here so i go to the first part of se section i'm gonna uncheck that one and i want to do this inside here we can start with an arc here we should be able to do an arc from here to here we do a line to here r to here and a line down to where far do it should be down to there somewhere and an arc over to here let's zoom out have a look that looks quite close to what i'm looking for it's gonna hit okay now i can always go back and turn on the mesh to check what i'm doing but we are going to start adding some some geometry to help ourselves uh, we can start with a line from here this should be uh, let's turn on the mesh again this here should be straight up to the here that should be the midpoint because that's the center point so we can start adding some constraints this must be horizontal this should be horizontal vertical same with this you see things sometimes move around so be careful there so i'm gonna undo that one i don't want it to mess up too much things that one there there as long as it doesn't get too annoyed i will add constraints give me checking that things doesn't go totally out of hand but done done and i have some basic uh, geometry lockdown i think i'll do a line i need to cut this of course in the middle here too so i'm going to do this up to here find the midpoint of the arc like that uh, these two here uh, should be concentric like that uh, we can do uh, how should we do this yeah we can do a line here to help us lock down the arcs from here out to there that should be horizontal coincidence so this is a lot of clicking if you're bored use the timeline and move forward uh, we can also make a coincidence between the midpoint of this and this line that should be horizontal like that locking in things so now we are we have some co uh, constraints added so things would not be flying around too much now can d for or d on my keyboard for start adding dimensions from this here out to this line here 19 point yeah it should be 20 uh, this is a 40 40 extrusion so this should be 20 and the same here this should also be 20 like that uh, can we have a look at some more dimensions here i'm going to turn on the mesh and have a look we are not too far away so we can try and dimension this here four point yeah that should most maybe be four uh we can do we can start adding some tangent constraints here that should be tangent that should be tangent and now we can dimension for distance here oh no uh, there's something that's not horizontal oh yeah we need to horizontal constrain this now we can dimension from here to here most probably two millimeters fusion needs to think a bit we can start working on our more tangent constraints be careful with tangent constraints they can make things fly around on the screen what is this arc that's most probably a one millimeter arc now we can work with tangent over here we can put the tangent over here having a look at the sketch i would say these two are equal so we do these two equal and where can we put a nice dimension to lock down this line here most probably from here that should be yeah that looks like six millimeters as you see i take the closest dimension this is a bit of guessing of course like most things but should get you going tangent here and that one and that one dimension this that should be yeah two and to me it looks like we need a tangent here 
I suspect that this one, this one, this one, and this one are all the same. Gonna use equal. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. Dimension from here to here. What do we have here? Four, it could be 4.5. Let's turn on the mesh and have a look. It looks good. Uh, let's lock down this line here. That should be 16. And what more do we need to do? We need to do this here in between these two. Yeah, that's looking like three. Let's turn on the mesh and have a look. Yeah, we are really close. That's look good. Uh, this here. Yeah, that's a two. Uh, need some more tangent constraints here, of course. Tangent, tangent, tangent. Are you? Tangent, uh, we might need to add a dimension to lock down from here to here. Yeah, that looks like two. Now we can keep on working our tangent constraints here and here. Now things might start moving around. Now we're quite close so far. I'm going to mention this one here. Yeah, 7.5 maybe. Let's have a look. Not too bad. This here. Mm, can it be 5.7? Uh, we are missing some tangent constraints here. Like that. What do we have here? Oh, that looks to be too much. So, sorry, 5.5. Uh, oh, we have forgot to mention this line here. This here needs to be locked down. Uh, that could be 8. 7.8. Yeah, something like that. That still looks a bit too much. 5.4. Maybe even 5. Yeah, that's good. Or well, that is 7.8. I don't know. That's not good. To the correct 7.5 maybe no 7.8 oh 7.75 that's a stupid dimension because it's most probably dimension across so that would be 15.5 if i'm not totally incorrect let's see do we have a fully defined sketch we have this looks like a mess now but we really don't care we can now we can do one more check before these two here should be 45 degrees and yes, that's a driven dimension, so that's 45, so that's correct, that's one eighth of a circle. So, with that, we can do finish sketch, we can extrude this, let's do it 20. We're going to S mirror, body, this body, across this plane. S, search for circular pattern, bodies, this body. The X is going to be this edgy. Just do it four times. Select all of it. Oh, I forgot the circle. Let's go back and do that. I noticed one thing. There's one thing that didn't pick up in the sketch. Uh, let's go back and edit the sketch. It didn't pick up a circle middle because that was not a, a part of there. We did the mesh section sketch. So we're going to do a circle here. And so let's see where we end up. Can it be seven? six point something i think it's a bit less than seven because i think we're supposed to be able to let's do it 6.7 like that let's go back to our extrude let's hide the mesh body mesh body and remove this part here hit okay yes look good so we're gonna hide the sketch select all of them oh sorry circle pattern you like his life missing axis so we need to use the origin axis now four times select everything get into the solid tab and do a combine combine join yes turn off radian and now we have a fully defined body we can now from this do if you want a useful sketch we can do a new sketch and project in the face of this because now we know that all things are symmetrical we do not have any problems from the mesh because there might be something broken inside the mesh the mesh is here so that's a bit of a different way it might not be a perfect workflow for this specific part here but it's a way of getting dimensions from a mesh and get them into a useful sketch it takes some time there are no ma nothing magic going from a mesh file into a solid body there are no magic tools you need to check things if you're going to use them for something with a bit of precision i hope this can be useful for you take care and see you around bye